Hi, I'm Anthony Galdi. Welcome to the music edition of Behind the Emerald Curtain. Today we'll visit an important member of the orchestra, the percussionist. We'll learn why specific sounds are used, how they're woven into the musical tapestry of the show, and what it takes to perform it on a nightly basis. Now let's go below the stage for a look at the hard-hitting percussion of Wicked. I had worked with Andy Jones as a percussionist. Uh, I knew him through friends, and Andy was Chicago-based. And I actually brought him to New York, or asked him if he would come to New York to do Wicked. He was the most creative percussionist that I had ever encountered, and therefore I wanted him to be part of the um, putting together the music of the show if, if I could get him to do it. I've been with uh, Wicked since the beginning uh, of the show, and, and uh, throughout rehearsals, Stephen Schwartz, uh, Stephen Remus, Jim Abbott, uh, Bill Brown, and I all worked together. Schwartz really wanted uh, Oz to have this kind of sparkle and exotic sound that, that uh, doesn't exist anywhere else. We're working in a fantasy drama, which requires several layers of removal from the reality. The percussion does have very specific thematic ideas and it. it it must follow the uh, the characterization and the drama very closely. Glinda has a lot of the high and sparkly sounds, bells and sleigh bells and triangles. Elphaba uses a lot a lot more earthy sounds. There's, there's some rattles and nut shakers and some African percussion and, and uh, it's, it's, it's I use instruments that kind of ground her and kind of maybe Native American or maybe African culture to, to make her feel more kind of earthy and shaman-like. It insinuates itself in the listener's mind, I think, and, uh, and helps operate in the drama, such as portraying the monkeys with the, with the wood. This was actually Bill Brown's idea. He wanted a collection of high wood sounds for the monkeys. You can kind of hear their, their hands are that tapping as they run around in the trees. Andy is, you know, he really thinks about telling a story with percussion. Some of the instruments are things that he makes. This is a pair of bird flappers that myself and a friend actually developed. Some of the things are standard instruments, but he uses them in a different way. The percussion at Wicked is in its own room separate from the rest of the orchestra. Uh, part, of the, part of the reason is there's 59 instruments and it takes up a lot of real estate. I would have probably taken up a, a quarter of the pit, but um, another reason is just the sounds. You put those in a pit, you might get the big sounds, you're probably not going to get the little sounds. Whereas in isolation, in my own separate room, uh, they can really focus in on the smaller sounds and not lose that. They have six mics placed throughout, but uh, to close mic, the show, I wear a hat um, that has, uh, has a microphone on the front um, and so I can do a shaker and like fade out or if I want something a little louder I'll lean closer to it. It's strung to the ceiling and it travels all around the setup and whatever I'm looking at or playing picks up. I have a video of the, of the conductor and, and there's three TVs in the room so that any direction I face I can see him. Before the show if there's a question or whatever I have a microphone a direct line to him. He looks to the left for the orchestral side, he looks to the right for the rhythm side, but um, for the harp and myself, I can kind of tell uh, that when he looks straight into the camera and he's giving me a note or a direction or, or something like that. The work with Stephen and Andy, might I add, was particularly fruitful, I think. I think I have the, the, the arsenal of standard orchestral percussion or instruments that are used on a, a lot of shows. But then I, I think I have some kind of wild uh, instruments that, that are really not normally used in, in, in theater, but, but really bring out an exotic kind of edge to Oz. Essentially, I just asked him to be creative and participate, and uh, he did obviously brilliantly.
Ta-da.